Hello, and welcome back to what's bubbling in Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to continue to continue to continue to talk about what is new in ZimCat at zimjs.com. So come on in and press on the cat there. Woo! And we'll pop on through. We've done the synth, the wire, the editor, more synth, the poly. We've done the asset. We've done the page. We've done the line. We've done the scrambler. And here is Zimbase. So this is a bubbling about Zimbase. Now, uh, not too long ago, we launched in the last version of Zim, we launched Zimbind, which allows us to bind to data either through local storage or onto a database. And therefore, we could have the user save their creations quite easily to a database and share their creations. Well, the database side, and we're particularly going to PHP and MySQLi. Let's just press on this thing. So we're accessing the database through um, PHP and MySQLi on the end. That gets around the MySQL injection bug, and that was early on. And uh, in the last, I don't know, eight, eight years or so, they have MySQLi and PDO, two libraries or, or systems within PHP that allow you to access the database now safely. Well, MySQLi is quite verbose. And so we applied the Zim feelings. <laughs> well, let's make that shorter, shall we? To make it one third. <laughs> Can you imagine? So we now have one third the amount of code, and hopefully it's more straightforward. See, MySQLi also passes SQL, and SQL is yet another language. It's a language of, of query, a query language. It's not too hard, and as a matter of fact, it reads really nicely. It's like select star from some database where, you know, it almost reads like English. But it still is another system. So what we've done is wrapped that up so basically, there's no SQL involved. All we're using are PHP strings and arrays. So th that means you're just using PHP. Let's have a look at what that would, would be like. So here's an example down here. Select a Zim. Oh, that's a picture I can't select. <laughs> Surprisingly, even though it says select, I, I can't select. It's a picture. Um, so select Zim base shape. So that's your, your table name. Uh, I want this field called JSON, the JSON field, where the ID is the ID. So that's the amount of code that we've done. And you would be amazed, be absolutely amazed at how much code that is in my SQLi. First of all, it's probably going to be about five lines of code. Half of those lines are really complicated looking. And yet we're able to do it like this. So this is ZimBase. You just include ZimBase, and it works seamlessly with uh, ZimBind and ZimAsync and ZimAjax to be able to get data back and forth. Uh, it makes it really easy to work with JSON as well, so that you could just store some JSON in a table, and you hardly have to do anything at all. You just send it there, and it will just stick this JSON in a table for you. I mean, it's not quite that simple, but it, it's close. And then when you when it, it, when you're binding, when you want information to come back, it just pulls that JSON and, and, and handles the translations for you automatically with ZimBind. So there you go. It also does some handy things if you need to, like um, collecting your post and get variables so you don't have to go through the rigmarole to do that. And it handles record locking. So uh, JSONP and AJAX, it will handle record locking for you. That's a little bit of a, con a complex scenario. Say you're chatting and you want to just keep on using the same information for the whole uh, chat room. You don't want to be, you don't want to have a local version of the chat and update that. Meanwhile, somebody else is updating their local versions and those two versions would conflict. So record locking is a way that just before you go to save it, it pulls it pulls the uh, the data from the database, locks the record, allows you to add to it, sends it back again, unlocks the record. And that way, while that record is locked, just, just momentarily, just microseconds, while that record is locked, nobody else is going to be entering a record in there for you. That, that type of thing. So all of that is handled with, with Zim Base for you. Isn't that amazing? So there's the zip file. There's three examples, including a Zim Base that isn't even Zim. So this is just a, an HTML table. 
and we can say bing bang what what is bing bang is a cement seller and submit and here's an example of all of uh, you know what what's been happening here now uh, well, does that take us back oh, it takes us back there and we're back to here uh, here is this was the last thing that I drew oh isn't that lovely but if we make changes to it and then refresh the page those changes are remembered they're from a database as a matter of fact you would end up seeing those changes too well unless somebody else comes in and changes it uh, <laughs> before you <laughs> or before you you see this okay and so even even layers of that ready I'll refresh again saved this is coming from the database we have an example like this that is coming from uh, local storage but this is now shared this information is shared with other people here's the last one a rating system where uh, we hit a rate there and submit I'm going to confirm and this is all of the ratings coming from the database and, and there you go so where I'm not going to take you into how it works in the back end there's there's an example <laughs> still can't select it an example of the types of stuff that you would do you would uh, insert this stuff, you would ask for a reply, or, or maybe check for an error, and then you would send the reply back. As a matter of fact, if you didn't check for error checking, which half the time I don't do, it's just one line of code, <laughs> which is amazing. That's really cool. So one line of nice new object-oriented PHP code. You can check out, what I wanted to show you was this, the school data, so lesson nine of Zim School. Here's where you can see videos about how to use this. So here's lesson nine. It talks about data. Blah, blah, blah. It has nice charts about what data is and brackets and boxes and hierarchies and how those are the same. Really handy. I would certainly take a look at, at this. It's very, very complete, as you can see. Um, there's stuff on traditional tables and server side and using async. And using bind and finally the last one here we'll just bump right down to it by the way all the, all those other ones are there with blah 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 um, but right here here's the the base reference on how to use base so it talks of, about the different formats of things those are these this is not a full thing that you would have to do this is one case of something you would want to do here's another case of something you want to do so it's not like you got to do all of that uh, probably, as a matter of fact, may as well. This is bubbling, although not not an explorer, but I could show you what the what the other stuff looks like. Let's see, where would that be? That would be on the server, probably. This is talking about PHP, associative arrays in PHP, collecting information. So all this stuff, dollar sign underscore posts and gets and is sets and that stuff goes away with Zimbase. Here's the MySQLi. So first of all, you do have to connect to your database. Uh, then here we are inserted. So here's the, the SQLI query. It doesn't even fit on the line. Here's a statement that we have to create. Um, if the statement is there, that, or if we can prepare the statement, then we need to bind the visitor and the count that's uh, these question marks right here. So you've got to put in these question marks up above. Uh, we've got to bind the parameters that are a string and an integer. We then have to execute and close. And this was just a simple insert. It wasn't even returning any values. Well, I suppose, uh, no, it echoed back. So it might be a, a, an Ajax call or something like that. But all of this was just one line in, in Zim. Well, actually, all of that was just one line in Zim with no thinking. And base gets rid of that, too. So it's like, wow, amazing. So if you're doing any data, that's there. But that's not all. Oh, I sound like somebody selling this. That's not all you're going to get for free. Also, you're going to get the videos. So if you... Um, here we are, so there's the base page. If you click to the base page, that's where we were before. But here's the creative coding video 39, 40. That will link you to the, the specific videos that relate to that. If we go back to the, the base page where we sort of started off, creative coding tutorial lessons. So we click that. These are the creative coding tutorials, videos for lesson nine for, for all of the data. 
including a breakdown of what's in the video. So you press on anything in here and it jumps you to the video right, right at that place. Here's information on that HTML form using with, um, that's using uh, uh, data in general. So uh, we also looked at how to use data from an HTML DOM just because their lessons on creative coding, maybe, maybe you want that. So there's database lessons. Here is um, the MySQLi insert lessons, the MySQLi select lessons. So we actually had to do separate videos on how to insert and how to select in MySQLi. They're so long that we have to do a complete video on it. Um, here's the using it with Ajax. So going back and forth with Ajax and that works fine with ZimBase. Here it is with binding. So this is videos about binding. And then finally, oh, no, canvas form. So more of a canvas form and a uh, base. So here's the video on how to insert, update, select, delete, query, all within little couple of minute videos, <laughs> right? All of them. And uh, connecting up and record locking, talking about record locking. So, uh, oh, that's not, um, and a, a full one on record locking. I guess this was a little bit looking forward to record locking and then a specific one about record locking, video 40, rounding off the Zim videos. So this is amazing stuff. Come on in and check it out. Of course, there's all the other, you know, if I scroll up to the top, these are all of the creative coding video lessons that take you through basically all of what you need to know to use Zim and build creatively on the canvas in a very colorful visual way. Each of these things is locked into uh, the Zim School lessons. So we click there, and this is the, the Zim School lessons on display objects, including, you can open these up and do exercises where you type in things, and there's a whole bunch of these are the different shapes, etc. And you've got those on the data side as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, can we even back up and get back to the beginning? We were looking at Zim base right here and how we can bind to a database with examples. And this is all uh, new in Zim cat. Well, bind has been around, but base is new. Excellent. It's been a what's bubbling at Zim. I am Dr. Abstract. Come on in and check out the other bubblings. Leave a, leave a note. If you're, if you're liking these things, if they're helpful to you, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> this is one thing we don't get is a lot of comments on these things. I'm not, not sure why. Hopefully, uh, if you're, you're watching them, you're, you're still here and it's a good thing. Give us a thumbs up. Don't be shy. Come on in and join us at zimjazz.com slash slack as well, where you can ask questions and show us what you're building, build a community around creating, uh, creating, um, interactive works with code. Love to, love to see you there as well. Ciao. Have a great day or night.